In the last lecture, we were looking at the adverse effects of the synthetic dyes and now we came to a conclusion that since synth synthetic dyes are toxic and natural dyes are safe, let us make a comparative you know uh, study as to if it is really so, then why is it so and what are the main characteristics which make the synthetic dyes now no more wanted in the uh, food industry or in the textile industry and what is it that makes the resurgence or the revival of natural dyes. So, with the advent of synthetic dyes, the limitation of natural dyes became louder such as lesser availability of the dye producing material due to difficulty in collection or lack of organized plantation farming of the dye plants, poor color yield, complexity of dyeing process, non reproducibility of shades, limited number of dyes, sometimes in inadequate fastness properties due to these problems encountered with natural dyes the development of synthetic dyes came into existence. The advent of synthetic dyes led to the collapse of huge natural dye industry. The development of synthetic dye at the beginning of the 20th century led to a more complete level of quality and more reproducible techniques of application. So, one thing has to be accepted that no product is foolproof. It has its own set of advantages and it has its own set of disadvantages. But natural dye which was practiced in earlier times in ancient times when we were studying the history of dye stuff, we said earlier in the ancient time in the prehistoric time and even in the before Christ period in the era of before Christ period and after Christ period. Every time we saw that it was only natural dye, natural dye, natural dye. There was no synthetic dye till 1857 so, uh, or 1896 because that was the time when there was a uh, uh, you know invention of uh, synthetic dyes. So, but when synthetic dye came into the market, it completely overpowered the market for the following reason that it could give a very even kind of dyeing and that the application technique was very easy. On the other hand, there were several several problems related to natural dye, its collection, its extraction, its poor yield, its complexity of dyeing process and then after all that if the shades were not reproducible or there were very limited number of shades and sometimes the fastness property would not be very desirable that means it would just run off and the color will run off in one or two washing. So, these were the kind of you know uh, comparative situations for synthetic dye and natural dye. Now, in that kind of a situation it is very hard for the manufacturing unit to decide what to choose because obviously when one is doing business one needs to have a quality control and the evenness of dyeing must be acceptable. If the dyes are in patchy uh, uh, description no buyer is going to buy that is a common uh, sense. So, therefore, it was important that these factors or the drawbacks that were with natural dyes, how they can be tackled and how it can be brought at par with synthetic dye. So, unless and until we make a comparative analysis of the two, we will not know how to deal with the problem. Blue acid direct dye in 1740, the first reference occurs in French to what became known as the essence of indigo. Indigo disulfonic acid which is obtained by treating indigo with concentrated sulfuric acid. It is a blue acid direct dye. 
it can be found in, for example, in English samplers sometimes with late 18th century dates and is easily run on washing. It reached Turkey in 1850. The first two fully synthetic dyes came on the market in 1856, picric acid in France, a direct yellow and mauve, a direct basic mauve in England. Far more important than either was Fushin, discovered in 1858, a bright magenta and again a direct basic dye. It was much cheaper than Mervine, but less fast to light and mild alkalis. A number of rel relatives of Fushin were discovered between 1860 to 1870, extending the color range into blue and green shades. But these very brilliant early anilines, so called because oxidation of aniline derivative was the method of preparation and are fragile, more fade, uh, most faded rapidly giving synthetic dyes a poor reputation. So in fact, the beginning of synthetic dyes was also not very bright and very easy. Why? Because it, was, it developed slowly. But as and when it developed, it became a boon in the uh, dyeing industry. Synthetic dyes, a second important group of dyes, the direct acid azo dyes were introduced in 1875 and provided shades of yellow, orange and red. They did not fade, but many ran easily. So they were run off in water, but they were not faded by the light. Other major and minor groups of synthetic dyes followed and before long the whole spectrum was covered. The new dyes essentially pure chemical compounds were more consistent and often more brilliant and cheaper than the natural dyes previously used. However, the many other qualities needed by the user were not always available and the synthesis of improved dyes continued to be the main preoccupation of organic chemists. So in fact, this, you know, the history of synthetic dyes shows that in the beginning, the dyes were not having the two main requisites that is uh, fastness to light and fastness to washing. And some of them were light fast but they would, uh, they didn't have good wash fastness and such a category will not really fit into the market very well because for a dyer it is important that any dye be it synthetic dye or be it natural dye must have two basic criteria fulfilled and what are these two basic criteria? One is the light fastness property and the other one is the wash fastness property. If they both have acceptable limits of these, then they are actually fit to be in the dyeing market. And therefore, the chemists, organic chemists of that era started making newer and newer and more stable dyes. They started understanding the structure and the structure that would be more compatible with the fiber so that the dye adherence is better and there is no fading due to light. So uh, dye adherence better would save it from running off in, uh, by water and if it did not get affected by the absorption of white light, it would not fade. So these were the two aspects on which newer synthetic dyes were being developed at that time. By the end of the 19th century, thousands of synthetic dyes were available, covering every possible shade and many such as the chrome dye, a set of azo dyes modented with chromium salts had excellent fastness. Around 1920, the last important niche, a green dye of good stability for natural fibers was filled by Caledon Jane Green a VAD dye. So you see that you know how from 18th century to 19th century uh, in a beginning of 19th century 
most of these synthetic dyes were already synthesized and were getting more stable and more acceptable because their properties of uh, were overcome and they became a more marketable product. These synthetic dyes have received faster acceptability due to its ease in dyeing, reproducibility and other factors. The dominance of dye industry by synthetic dyes over natural dyes received a severe blow only a decade ago when toxicological effects of the dye during wearing became more and more known and caused a great concern about the use of the synthetic dyes. So, you see how from the natural dye market suddenly with the advent of synthetic dyes, the natural dyes faded and it was only in the 19th century the 18th century towards the end and the 19th, entire uh, 19th century, uh, it was only synthetic dye market. But what started happen, happening that by the end of the 19th century and the 20th century, beginning of 20th century, people started noticing the adverse effect of the synthetic dyes. And therefore, there was a resurgence or revival of natural dyes again now. So, you see how you know the whole um, uh, all the time the synthetic dye and the natural dyes have been in competition with each other and the effect of that is because they have been found to be toxic. One obvious way of obtaining the advantages of natural dye stuff was to synthesize the compounds they contain. Thus, alizarine the main coloring matter of madder was prepared artificially in 1880, giving dyers in Europe all the advantages of that excellent and versatile dye. Similarly, indigo was made commercially in 1897. The synthetic version is exactly equivalent to and indistinguishable from the natural dye stuff. So, you see the other alternative was that that because synthetic dyes were found to be so dangerous and toxic and so on and so forth, it was then thought by organic chemists that why not to synthesize very uh, molecules which are very similar to the natural analogs. And therefore, the simplest of the simple molecule that is the alizarine. Yesterday, we were looking at the structures of alizarine. It is an anthroquinoid dye and it has an ortho hydroxy groups. So, when it has two hydroxy group in the last ring of the aromatic, it has a good chelating effect and this is naturally also available and synthesizing this small molecule was not a big challenge. Similarly, indigo is another naturally occurring dye, but it could be easily synthesized in the laboratory and it was found that both the synthetically made alizarine and indigo were quite similar in their reactivity towards the fiber and in their wash fastness and in their light fastness with uh, the compatibility was similar. Therefore, the market for the red dye uh, could be substituted with synthetic uh, alizarine if uh, the uh, natural alizarine could not be obtained in those quantities. And as I said a while ago, uh, a few lectures ago that the entire denim industry is thriving on synthetic indigo. All the blue genes that you see are dyed by indigo. But they are not natural indigo, they are synthetic indigo dyed uh, fabrics. Significance is where natural dye surpasses the synthetic dyes. So, when we are making a comparative data or a comparative uh, analysis of uh, how the synthetic dyes and the natural dyes fare, we can take a more closer look and understand synthetic dyes tend to remain quite stable to common oxidation and reduction processes as per their designing and so are very difficult to remove from the textile industry effluents. 
natural dyes are biodegradable without the use of any oxidant or reductant. So you see that synthetic dyes are very hard to break and special oxidative and reductive processes are required if the dye effluent has to be uh, you know decolorized. But that is not the case with natural dye. Why? Because all the natural dyes are coming from the biotic material and they are very easily biodegradable. Synthetic dyes if at all are degraded are full of byproducts that are directly or indirectly proven to be health hazards. Such hazardous compounds have so far not been detected in the natural dye degraded byproducts. It is possible that natural dyes completely degrade under natural conditions. So you see that we just took a look at the degraded product of azo dyes and we found that this one amino 2 naphthol which comes from the breaking of the azo linkage is the most notorious and toxic material. But we do not find such components or metabolites or degraded products from natural dyes and therefore they are safe and they do not interfere and they simply degrade under natural conditions and they do not release any harmful chemicals. Intensity and brilliance. Natural dye color variation and brilliance is achieved by mixing different mordants with one batch of skin, manipulating the pH of the dye bath, investing hours of time for one color. Now that is true that when one is working with natural dyes, one has to do a lot of permutation combination and it is a very slow process and then only the color variation and the brilliance can be achieved. Color obtained from natural sources tend to be earthy and stubble. S synthetic dyes often produce garish, stark and muddy colors. So they are very strong and brightly colored. Wool rugs prepared with natural dyes are color fast and will last a lifetime. Color fastness can be tested by, running the, uh, by rubbing the surface of the weaving or if the weave lets you with a damp cloth, if the dye does not transfer, there is a good chance that the color is permanent. So these were various ways of simplified ways of testing whether a dye is you know uh, a permanent dye or a dye is fugitive dye and so on. But there are very, very discrete uh, differences between the synthetic dyes and the natural dyes. It is not only the degraded product that makes them different, even the ease of using is very different. Natural dyes are a little tedious process, uh, uh, require a tedious process in dyeing, whereas in synthetic dyes the ease of application is much simplified. And the color obtained is much brighter, whereas in the case of natural dyes, it is more earthy color and more, you know, sober in nature. So these are the kind of differences which cannot be matched one is to one. One is different from the other, this is what has to be accepted. Of course, there are price differences, no doubt about it. Because the process of collection, extraction, isolation and use is tedious in the case of natural dyes, the material because they are scarce and expensive, for example, cochineal is more costly per ounce than its synthetic analog. Synthetic dyes are readily available at low cost resulting in a less costly rug to produce. Density of weave also adds to quality and therefore to cost. A low cost rug will likely to be woven by synthetic dyes on brittle machine and not hand spun wool and therefore it will have loose weave. So you see that synthetic dyed rug can be identified so easily whereas hand woven rug, rug means carpet. These one can make a very distinct um, evaluation of whether a carpet is hand woven 
or it is machine made and if it is machine made whether it the dye that has been used in coloring the various wool shades are synthetic or natural even that can be evaluated. Advantages of natural dyes are also there as I was telling you that every commodity has its own advantages as well as disadvantages. Therefore, even natural dye it is not very difficult to handle natural dyes. There are uh, some very positive aspects of natural dyes which has brought them back again into the market. Natural dyes cover the area of green chemistry. A great need of research is required for green dyes to replace toxic synthetic petroleum based dyes. It has been a matter of debate that synthetic dyes give a better glow and a range of color while the natural ones are limited to dull and muddy colors only. It is not at all true as natural dyes not only give us a feel of superior, superior quality sensory experience but also provide a spectrum of colors. The five classic and popular natural dyes are indigo, madder, cochineal, weld and kutch. So, this will indigo will give blue, madder will give red, cochineal will give purple, weld will give yellow and kutch will give brown color. So, it is covering almost you know the whole range. And with the permutation and combination of these dyes, one can generate more secondary colors. These can give rise to almost any color with the exception of a few colors like fluorescent and electric blues. Natural colors are basically plant dyes, but some of them are of origin, uh, animal origin such as cochineal, which is obtained from insects. These five dyes show the properties of very strong eels. They are resistant to fading, relatively fast color along with easy availability. So, now you see the main problems of natural dyes which were identified were that they were not available in required quantity, they did not have fastness property, they, were, uh, they did not give too much of dye from the plant material and they had very poor light fastness. All this at least has been uh, not so in the case of these five dyes. And which are the five dyes? Indigo, madder, cochineal, weld and kutch, which would give blue, red, purple, yellow and brown respectively in their shades. Therefore, it is advantageous that one should now switch over to uh, natural dyes because there are light fastness property containing dyes even in the natural category. They are now there are organized farmings that are producing only these products for the sake of catering the natural dye industry. Toxicity factor considering the toxic effects of the synthetic dyes, there has been a renewed effort to study and implement the various natural dyes in the dye stuff industry. Primarily, there are three categories of natural dyes. Firstly, those that are derived from plants like indigo. Second, the ones that are obtained from animals, sources such as cochineal and the remaining are those that are gotten from minerals that is the okra. Natural dyes can provide the much needed alternative to the complex world of chemical dyes. So, you see that even the toxicity factor, I mean if one considers only that toxicity factor, one has to understand that synthetic dyes are definitely very toxic. We have just taken an evaluation in the previous lecture how toxic these reactive dyes are, how toxic these azo dyes are and what actually causes the toxicity. We have taken an overview of that. So, now by now you would have understood and would have developed an appreciation for switching over to natural dyes. 
but the disadvantages of natural dyes have also been overcome. So, one is trying to make a balance or strike a balance that natural dyes with all its you know positivity can be made further better and match the ease with which synthetic dyes came into the market and was being practiced in the market. Actually what happened was that the German ban came in 1996. Germans struck a severe blow to dye stuff industries and subsequently other European countries also executed ban on import of textile and garments colored with a series of azo dyes made from aromatic compounds which were found to be carcinogenic, allergic and poisonous. Azo compounds are reduced by intestinal anaerobic bacteria through scission of azo bond to form aromatic amines which are toxic to living organism. The use of natural dyes however has not entirely disappeared. Since the 1960s craftsmen have been interested in those dyes that can be grown and used in the domestic environment and in the 1980s natural dyes were seen as an ideal alternative to the cheap synthetic ones that had damaged the reputation of traditional weaving and dyeing. So you see that how and why this kind of thing happened, what caused the uh, downfall I would say of the synthetic dye market and what caused, caused the resurgence or revival of natural dye. That was primarily because of this particular ban which came in 1996 and this is called the German ban. So you should be aware and the German ban was first actually targeting the carcinogenic azo dyes. And a list of 22 dyes were completely banned from the market. That is because by now studies had been done and it was found that they are highly injurious for uh, human being. And because that they were banned, the dye industry had to be supplemented with some alternative. And therefore, in 1960s, between 1960s to 1980s, slowly the natural dyes were being promoted and after this ban, in India also the Indian ban came in following the German ban and after that it was more aggressive movement towards the use of natural dyes. Repercussions of German ban, however due to German ban on azo dyes in 1996, there is currently a move to find renewable sources to supplement the need for safe dye industry. This trend has led to resurgence in research in the production of natural dyes on the commercial scale. Commercialization of natural dyes which are extracted from vegetative matter and animal residues have become very important in fashion trends. They are not only chemically safe but also add aesthetic value to the dyed fabric. So you see as a result or repercussion of this German ban, the Indian ban came into existence. So even from the Indian textile market or color market, dye market, the synthetic dyes were then banned. Now, if these dyes are banned, obviously people will not start wearing uh, undyed clothes. They, nobody will, you will not see that the whole society is wearing only white clothes because the synthetic dyes have been banned. So therefore, there was a necessity for having safe natural dyes in the market. So therefore, there was this whole process of promotion of natural dyes by the government. Because the Ministry of Textile then started uh, approaching people to start working on commercialization factor. Organized farming for natural dyes were being promoted. And because of that, many in many places, 
these factories were organized where extraction of natural dyes, production of natural dyes was promoted and there was a lot of subsidy given by the uh, government so that people should plunge into this new area and find uh, a business out of it. And because of this commercialization of natural dyes, lot of veg organized farming was promoted from because dyes have to be extracted from vegetative matter or these animals which actually are color producing very few of them. We just learned that you know lac dye and cochineal are the two animal origin dyes, others are all from the vegetative uh, dyes and the ones which I mentioned that is indigo madder weld and kutch, they are all from plant sources, only cochineal is from animal source. So, it was given a great impetus that these dyes should be pr pr produced in larger quantity. So, if they have to be produced in larger quantity and they are not being synthesized as a synthetic analog, then more and more vegetative or animal producing uh, uh, substances should be made available in these factories, so that they can extract these dyes. So, therefore, there was a resurgence of natural dyes. The use of non-allergic, non-toxic, eco-friendly natural dyes on textiles has become a matter of significant importance due to the increased environmental awareness in order to avoid some hazardous synthetic dyes. However, worldwide the use of natural dyes for the coloration of textile has mainly been confined to artisans, craftsmen, small scale co cottage level dyers and printers as well as to small scale exporters and producers dealing with high value eco friendly textile production and sales. So, although there is a resurgence of natural dyes because they are non-allergic, non-toxic and they do not create a uh, dye effluent which is you know uh, which needs to be specially treated because of its toxicity. Therefore, it is you know eco-friendly, it is environmentally friendly dye and but at the same time it is not picked up in the market like the synthetic dye. Why? Because you know it is only being practiced by small craftsmen and artisans and it, in, in small cottage industries because that is the level that can be handled in small groups because the amount of vegetative matter that would be required for dye extraction is huge. Why? Because these plant parts have something like 2 to 10 percent of dye only. So, you imagine if 10 grams of dye have to be obtained, 100 grams or 200 grams or 500 grams of substance will be required, but that is not all because they have to be made in kgs. So, the magnitude of vegetative matter that is required is very large and therefore, it is important that they are being uh, to understand that they are just being practiced by small players. It has still not come into the main uh, market uh, relay because it the main market has huge requirements, but there is a big drive to have bigger commercial houses which can produce larger quantities of uh, these natural dyes and the natural dye quality needs to be standardized and they should be make, made equivalent to synthetic dyes just to be able to use off the shelf just the way synthetic dyes are being used and all those things are taking place. As we go along in the next few lectures, we will try to look at how the standardization process takes place how these dyes are you know they need to be standardized. One thing you have to also understand and appreciate that plantation 
of a particular plant. Say suppose I, I take an example of indigo. Indigo that is grown in Bihar and indigo that is grown in, uh, in, in Himachal Pradesh will definitely have different indigotin content. It, it is not that both the plantations will have the same amount of indigo and at the same time they may or may not have some other colorant also um, in the plant material. So, that variation needs to be manipulated or organized and all those standardization processes we will try to take a look at it in the next few lectures. So, therefore, health and safety aspects of natural dyes, although all natural dyes are not 100 percent safe, they are less toxic than their synthetic counterparts. Many of the natural dyes like turmeric, anato, saffron are permitted as food additives. Many natural dyes have pharmacological effects and possible health benefits. They are obtained from renewable sources. Natural dyes cause no disposal problem as they are biodegradable. Practically no or mild reactions are involved in their preparation. They are unsophisticated and harmonized with nature. Many natural dyes have the advantage that even though they have poor wash fastness rating, they do not stain the adjacent fabrics in the washing process because of the non substantiative nature of the dye towards the fabric. An exception to this is turmeric, which shows substantiativity for cotton. So, you see that so many aspects we have learned. We have seen the difference between the synthetic and the natural dyes, but overall if one has to sum up one would try to look up and say that looking at the health and safety aspects of the natural dyes and the biodegradable nature of the natural dyes, it is more and more advisable to bring and use only natural dyes and only rarely use those synthetic dyes which are safe and which do not give any harmful biodegraded products. So, therefore, these natural dyes because they are also obtained from the renewable sources, the plants can be always harvested and the dyeing material can be obtained or the dye can be extracted from them. Advantages of natural dyes, health safety aspects of natural dyes we have just taken a look. Although all natural dyes are not 100 percent safe but then they are less toxic that we also have seen. They are obtained from the renewable sources. We have seen very clearly that these points are like added advantage to the natural dyes. So, if we have to sum up, we can say that natural dye is the order of the day.